A house divided cannot stand, and the Technodrome has got a big problem. We all love rap, but we can't decide which era is best. So we need to have a debate. In my corner, we've got the lyrical gymnastics and one-upsmanship of guys like Big Daddy Kane and Rakim from the late 80s and early 90s. I'll be representing the flow, the storytelling, and the swagger of the mid to late 90s with guys such as Tupac and Biggie. But where does Duff stand on this debate? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Throwbacks with the Technodrome. It's been a little while since you've had a full episode from us. Just want to say hello to my friends here. Mr. Duff, Mr. Scales, how you doing? Hi. Doing good. How you doing? We're doing dandy. I'm doing well. Um, one of us recently got engaged, not it. Oh, Mr. Oh. Duff, congratulations. <laughs> Last to the you nose. Me. You got me. Yeah, Mr. Congrats. Duff is now fiance. Congrats, my friend. Fiance with one E. Yes. I learned that distinction recently too. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But let's get to the topic at hand. Today's topic is hip hop. Rap music, you might call it. It's the most popular music of today and basically of our generation. Um previous generation the past few from the 50s up until late 80s early 90s rock was king and it kind of had its last stand in the 80s and all of a sudden this upstart rap came along and took the world by storm and rap just didn't resonate with people anymore really um everybody was all about rap we had yo mtv raps and soon Thankfully, thank God, hair metal got flushed down the toilet and rap came along and it was a breath of fresh air. But not everybody likes the same kind of rap and it didn't always resonate with everyone. But the biggest rap fan of the three of us is Mr. Scales. So Mr. Scales, why don't you tell us when did you start listening to rap? What do you like about it? Why does it resonate with you? Who are some of your favorite rappers? Give us a little little history. Sure, absolutely. Um... So my earliest memories of like becoming a rap fan and starting to listen to rap music was probably fifth grade or so. So about 1995, 96. Um, I remember the first CD single that I went and bought at Strawberries, which was a music store back in the day, uh, was Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise. That was the first CD that I actually purchased. Um, I loved that song as a kid. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. Th the weird, the weird Al version? Oh, that's a good one too. The Amish Paradise is a classic. I love, I love Word Al, but you know, we'll probably yeah. have a whole episode about him one day. Um, Even Ezekiel thinks that my mind is gone. <laughs> Freaking Ezekiel! Oh. Now you said a music store. What is that? There were stores that sold music at one yeah, point. Yeah, you could actually go in and buy tangible music with a you had cassette to buy tape, music? maybe a CD. What is this? Hold on. <laughs> what is this? C D compact disc. All you kids out there that don't know what that is. Is that like I think it's a clueless uh, duff. Is that <laughs> <laughs> and that just makes me think of my uh Loyola picture. Uh, <laughs> Extremely clueless. <laughs> oh, yeah. is, is a CD, is that something similar to a uh how do you how do you pronounce it? A, a cassetti? Is that what a, a, a cassetti? Cassetti? cassetti was a little bit before I, the C D. Um it's a it's cassette with one E. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gotta put the accent yeah. on the wrong syllable there, Duffy. Yeah. <laughs> C yeah, CDs are just like they are at the bank now. No interest. But um, shh, go for it. <laughs> oh. um, so yeah, so Coolio Gangsta's Paradise, my first CD purchased. Um, but then from there, you know, my brother Tony was a big influence because he was a huge rap fan, and he's um, you know six years older than me. So he was in high school, and he was into just a lot more advanced stuff than I was as a little kid. But he had this huge um, you know album with. Uh, like a physical album with CDs in it, right? The sheets. 
and with the CD with the CD covers on them. And I just have such vivid memories of all these different CD covers that he had in his album, you know, and borrowing the CDs from him, um, playing them on my boom box. Um, I remember, geez, uh, just a couple of big names in that initial phase for me. Um, the Fugees, you know, when they came out with the score, it's a great album with Lauren Hill and Wyclef and Praz. That was a huge influence on I'd go with rap music. Uh, obviously, Biggie and Nas, Jay Z, uh, Tupac. I remember in fifth grade, I brought in uh, one of Tupac's albums. My brother had it, and because I love the song "Dear Mama," I don't know if you guys are familiar with that song by Tupac. It just always struck a chord with me, and I love that song. And I brought it to my fifth grade class and got my teacher to actually play it on the on the uh, boombox, which is cool. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Um, you know, got into middle school and, you know, that's when I really got into uh, Jay-Z and Biggie and, you know, it was a different group, of, different group of kids I was mixing with and got my eyes open to different types of rap music. Uh, got into high school and I started, you know, that was the time of, you know, Napster and LimeWire and all those uh, file share softwares that we had as kids. And I used to love downloading music and making CDs. Um, and actually brought a couple of things here that I've made back in those days. Wow. If you can see that. Yeah. Jay-Z's Jay greatest, greatest hits. hits. I actually used like some clip art or something to make these album covers. And I have uh, That's pretty cool. the best of uh, Biggie Smalls there. Um, and then on top wow. of that, once I started diving into a lot more rappers, I started making my own DJ mixes. Um, before DJ Scales was a thing, it was just Steve. So I had Steve one, Steve two. I don't, I think I ended at like Steve 60 and I was still making them in college. JD used to get a kick out of me making these CDs and giving them to him to put on his iTunes. Um, so this I was like in high school, I was like the go-to guy amongst my group of friends to make these, you know, mixtapes of sort um, with all the popular songs of that month or a couple months. And so, so question, were you one of the guys that had the double disc drive to be able to burn CDs? I did. Because yes. Okay. I did. Yeah. So that's did the, yeah, just a regular DVD drive yeah. and then a CD rewritable drive later, maybe DVD rewritable drive. Um, but yeah, I used to love burning, yeah, burning like CDs. You, need, you needed the one, like, because I think the light had to pass through one to get to the other. Some, it was some mechanism like that. Yes. You know, before. Uh, uh, it, them, burning CDs? Burning CDs, yeah. The kids don't probably know what the hell that even means. You know, <laughs> it's just... Uh, uh, an old an old saying you know you would download these songs on your computer and burn them onto a cd sounds so strange right you don't just click a button and download an itunes song and put it on your iphone it was a lot more to it back in the day waiting 20 minutes yeah. to download one song if you have you know semi-good internet back in the day yeah. but it's it's funny because i so i asked if that's what you did because you said you were the guy because it's like everybody every school had you know the one or two guys is like yeah i can make cds for you you know you got like five dollars and i get you you know whatever cd but because not everybody had that double dish drive where, right you know there was the the one the one tray and the one tray and yep. then once you know all our laptops were able to burn them then it was a lot easier right you know, they, yeah they, they but yeah for them. sure i was helping out a lot of uh, cool. rap fans and providing them um Sometimes I'd make custom, they give me playlists and I put it together for them just because I, I love doing it. I love the rap music. I love to listen to songs I didn't know and make CDs for other people too. Um, so one, so now those, yep. those CDs that you have, sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. um, are, do they still play? <laughs> I haven't. Like the, so they still work? I have a... Um, so, well, they probably do. So I have an Eminem one that's in my car in my six disc changer that I still listen to. I don't have the case for it. I think I've lost it. But if that one works, uh -huh. these ones probably work too because I made them all around the same time, which is probably like 2000, 2001, maybe how's, something like that. How's yeah. the sound quality on those bad boys? Because I remember early burnt CDs, all the MP3s sounded like they were underwater kind of. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. I always try to download. I'd always like... You know, if I downloaded one and it was crappy quality, I try to find you know a bigger file size that maybe sound a little better. Um, and give if it was like some new you. hot single, hopefully you didn't have a DJ like yelling over half the damn track. You'd have to avoid the one you download yeah. music to. <laughs> and then you would get a, a virus song too. Yeah, yeah. Open it up on Winamp and play it. <laughs> yes, loved Winamp. Loved uh, Winamp. Just watch, um, like the little designs that would like. Show. Yes, yes. Oh that's, man, that's get me back right there. Windows Media, right? Yeah. Yes. I think you get skins uh, on Winamp. Okay. Yes, the skins. Yeah. Oh man. Yes. Wow, I haven't thought yeah. about that in so long. <laughs> That's what the show's all about. That's amazing. Um, yeah. well, one last thing before I pass it over to uh, 
pass over to you guys. The first major concert that I went to, I'm going to say first major concert that I went to, um, Puff Daddy and the Family. Uh, this was so this was after Biggie Smalls died. This was uh, I just I googled it. It was like uh, March 16th, 1998, uh, the New Haven Coliseum. Puff Daddy and the Family. To- my brother Tony um, and Dante. You guys know Dante. Dante. The three of us went. Yeah. Um, great concert. You know Puff Daddy, Mace, The Locks, uh, Busta Rhymes was there. Little Kim. It was just a great show. I mean, I was uh, 12, 13 years old probably you know didn't even know half the hell was really going on in there but i had a blast and um that memory stuck with me and then actually like four or five years ago they did a bad boy and a family reunion tour and me and tony went to that in charlotte so it was like reliving the childhood from 20 years prior um you know all those rappers don't look the same as they did 20 years ago mostly little kim is not very was, lil anymore <laughs> i was gonna say she looks exactly the same what are you talking about yeah yeah doesn't look exactly like her any, anymore but um and puff daddy doesn't even have the same name anymore oh, he's had so many he's names do, like, 19 years. name changes <laughs> so funny that's yeah, awesome so that's, that's a real, that was a real who's who concert to go to as oh a yeah like, yeah it was yeah i mean obviously i wish i got to see uh biggie but um you know didn't 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 happen but you know the that concert was definitely a memory yeah. I'll, I'll 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 last on forever if biggie was still around that concert might not have even happened because him true his death kind of launched those other careers true in the mainstream yeah. anyway yep. yeah you're right right where 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 would puff daddy be without i'll be missing you in the mainstream anyway yeah, yeah i mean that's a a lot of people make that point um yeah. it's a valid valid point is uh we don't know we don't know what would have what would have been if Biggie didn't get shot, yeah. you know, what would would Puff Daddy have just kept as producing and not took off with a solo career? And who, who knows? But yeah. either way, it was all great music for me. For my ears, I loved I loved Puff Daddy and the family. I loved Bad Boy Records. Um, it's all good stuff. Nice. That's cute. All right. How about um, you? Who? Sorry, we're gonna throw it to no, Duff. No, we're we're co-hosting. This is a joint venture here. So <laughs> okay, yeah. So go ahead. Me? I bestow. Okay. Yeah, I bestow the power yeah. upon you, Mr. Scales. To okay, all right, that's enough out of me for now. I can I'll get back into some other stories later. But uh, I want to throw it over to Mr. Duff over there uh, for his. Let's hear his two cents because we always know we pay more than two yeah, cents yeah, for it. Got three cents over here. If you want, but, <laughs> um, I actually hip hop was kind of what I initially got into with with uh, music growing up. Um, started listening really getting into music probably when i was like eight nine years old or so i don't know what does that put me at like what 93 94 somewhere around there um yeah uh, what is it Com- compact discs cassettes uh one i remember one of my first um actual cassettes it was like a it was a recorded cassette tape of skilo remember that dude his album nice. you know nice. that that song i wish or whatever and I just feel like I resonated with him. Like uh, this guy's short too. He knows what I'm doing. He knows what I'm doing. He's talking about right cast. Yeah. <laughs> no. Was that? I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, that's I had a girl who looked yeah. good. I would call. <laughs> she had a rabbit in a hat. <laughs> yeah, Skilo. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know. Just something about him, and it was like one of the first ones that I got. Um, another f- early memory: uh, Montel Jordan. Uh, one of his uh, earlier albums, which, uh, you know, one of his songs kind of resonates with uh, one of his songs on Cast's list tonight as well. Um, another earlier one, I don't know if you remember this one, uh, Soul For Real. You guys remember that one, Candy Rain? Candy Rain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just, if I heard you know, it. Yeah. It, again, these are just some things that are just kind of my early, really early memories. And then as I grew up a little bit, you know, then, you know, I started going more into Dr. Dre, Biggie, um, you're not gonna like me for this. Never really got into Tupac that much. I just, he didn't really, I don't know, he didn't really do it for me. Um, but definitely, you know, Wu Tang. And um, I I have to say, I probably didn't get into a little of the like older school type stuff, like late 80s, 90s, like I know what we're gonna be getting into until I got a little older. Um, I just didn't appreciate it probably as much with that time period, but it kind of just, yeah, just, I got into a lot of this. That's basically kind of what I listened to. And, and before I started branching off and 
kind of listening to different music probably when I got into like middle school, um, early high school and stuff. And then it kind of like, I still really liked hip hop. It was just, it kind of gave me a platform to like go into some other genres of music and appreciate it. Cause you could hear where some of, you know, they'd get some of these ideas. You know, one of my, I know you guys know, one of my favorite bands is Incubus and you know, they have a DJ as part of their setup. So there's some correlation there to some hip hop sounds, uh, some, some, you know, things that they do for, you know, sampling and throwing things in there that, you know, can resonate from, you know, hip hop essentially. So it kind of branched me out a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I always appreciate it. I'll always have a special place in my heart too. <laughs> and, you know, some songs come on it just kind of gets you moving. Um, you know, uh, yeah, just, it, that's kind of where uh, where I started and still kind of feel like that to this day. So Duff, you, you even open up my eyes. I know, like I said, through the years, people have introduced me to rap that I maybe wasn't as familiar with. And in college, you were a big fan of the Neptunes and Pharrell, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I had known some of their tracks. I know clips and I know that they were, you know, with the Neptunes. Um, but I didn't know them to the level that you did. And we used to file share on our college network, right? And I'd take all your iTunes, with, take all your Neptunes tracks. And then we even got to see them in, in concert up there yeah. um, in Connecticut before I moved here, which was pretty awesome. Southern, right? I think it was. Yeah, it's Southern Connecticut, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's it just, yeah, there's just so many different, like some of these, some of these guys have just so many little, uh, you know, projects and stuff that they work on and they use their different influence, influences on, uh, you know, what they're doing, uh, like with Pharrell, you know, Neptunes, um, you know, he's, he does his own solo work. He produces, he just does so much and he's just super another, talented. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, he's also like what, 50 years old and he doesn't look a day over 30. Yeah. <laughs> Baby face. He's 50. I think he's close. He's in his either late forties. I, I know he's older than you would think he is. Absolutely. I didn't know who he was until a few years ago. So I just assumed he was young, but yeah, he, he looks yeah, he's really up, young. He's definitely up there, but uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I remember those, oh, the good old days of the file sharing at, a. Fairfield. We're where... talking about LimeWire now, folks, people. <laughs> LimeWire. Yes, keep up. Keep up. Just grab like yes. random, like there was that, there was one dude that lived near us that had all these random like, like theme songs and like, you know, commercial songs that I, I remember. Yeah. From, he had like, you know, the Budweiser, this Bud's for you and like, like <laughs> Real those of random, genius. random things. And I'm like, yeah, oh, this guy's probably got like a 4.0. <laughs> that was another like, thing. It was um, like really <laughs> That was another thing when you're in the dorms um, on iTunes, you had access to everybody's iTunes library if it was shared. Yes. Yes. And you could get a whole, listen to a whole bunch of music from, you know, without buying it, without having to worry about getting a virus, downloading a file. It's like, oh, wow. Wasn't, and then wasn't there a specific huge. app you had to use where you could, you could um, take the music from the iTunes? It wasn't through iTunes, but it was an app that I think would work with it where you could like take them off of iTunes to put them on your computer. I remember using that. I don't remember. I can't remember. All the Probably. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't think I ever had it. I don't know. But I, I, yeah. I think that's, that's accurate. Yeah. I just never I had, had the app. Not to get so. track or anything, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is no track. It's all right. I, I'm, you know, we're hosting this. We're allowing it. So. Touche. Yeah. Touche. The touche is right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess I'll give my history on, uh, my entrance to rap. So uh, my earliest entrance to rap would be one of the first cassettes, first albums I ever had that was my own, which was Hammer, Please Don't Hurt Him, because you couldn't escape the power of MC Hammer and you can't touch this, you know, back in like 1990 or 1991. Um, that, you know, Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby, you know, these were pop rap songs that everybody knew. Um, but as I grew up, you know, when I hit about the you know school age that you guys are talking about, and all those guys mid mid nineties to late nineties, you know, Biggie, Puffy, didn't like any of it, didn't like it at all. Um, and of course, you know, I have to be different from the rest of the group. Um, I became, I got into rock, and then I got into harder rock, and then to metal. You know, I was a total metalhead when I was in high school. I had no interest in any rap at all i didn't like any of it um there was really kind of there was a point where i could have gotten into either and it just it was a matter of what i was exposed to first um and i guess whatever rock and metal i heard i liked a lot better than whatever rap i heard and i just went all the way towards one aesthetic and one sound versus another but mixed in there 
every now and then I'd hear something I liked. I always thought, you know, old school rap. I'm talking about old, old stuff, you know, like Sugar Hill Gang. I always thought that stuff was fun and I enjoyed it, but I just didn't own any of it and I never really listened to it. Um, and then, you know, being from Brooklyn, being from New York, you know, the Beastie Boys always creep onto your radar. So I like them a little bit. Um, but I had, as a lot of people did, uh, the Prodigy album, Fat of the Land. And on there is a song, Diesel Power, which is uh, Cool Keith, who I didn't know back then, um, does the rap on that song. And it's actually a pretty awesome song. And I always liked that one. So it was like, you know, the one rap song that I liked in addition to, and, you know, it's on an electronic album. You know, it's not metal, but, you know, it's something that's kind of hard edged. Um, but then that was really it for a while. And then I think my senior year of college, I started listening to Public Enemy a little bit. Um, you know, and found my way there. So just like I would a parking spot, I backed my way into rap. Um, I thought that like I liked Chuck D a lot. I thought that you know his he has like an awesome voice. Um, he's very intelligent. Um, you know, good rhymes, and a lot of this stuff was over kind of. You, know, you hear like old school funk and soul in there. You know, Bomb Squad's production is pretty dense, so it could be a little bit tough to pick out what's in there. But I was really only Public Enemy for a while, and then I started a band um, after college, and you know we played hard rock, played metal. But you know, my friends in the band, like my friend Al and uh, Fish, they're into uh, you know some funkier stuff and some soul. And Al likes a lot of rap stuff, and so I get exposed to this and that. Uh, didn't really take, but I liked the funkier stuff. And then when I was listening to Public Enemy, I heard Big Daddy Kane on one of their tracks, uh, uh, Burn Hollywood Burn. And uh, he does a verse on there. I was like, hmm, I was like, this Big Daddy Kane guy sounds like he's pretty good. Let me check him out. And then I heard a few of his songs and I heard it's basically just like crazy rhymes over old school funk and soul, you know, with, you know, a little more emphasis on the low end and a little more, you know, like, a little bit more of a beat than uh, like the syncopation. Uh, I was like, okay, I could get into this. And then I got into other acts from there, like Eric B and Rakim and Ultra Magnetic MCs and a whole bunch of other stuff. So my, my approach to music was always, I'd listen to something and then try to find out who are other popular acts around the same time and who influenced all those bands. I just work, bands are artists and I work my way back. So that's kind of what I did with rap. Um, but, you know, they, then you hit a point where you don't really like anymore. And I kind of focused in on this one specific era because I normally, if I like something, I'll research it. I'll start reading about it. And I was reading about hip hop and there was what's called the golden era of hip hop. And that's that kind of sweet spot from right where the old school MCs end and then before the kind of biggies and Tupacs of the world took over in early to mid nineties. So it's this period from about 86 or so to maybe, and there's some overlap, but about 86 to 91 or 93. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this topic today is that so scales, you love one kind of rap that I don't. And I love one kind of rap that you just never really took off for you. So this is a way of kind of exposing each other to this. But whenever I've had a conversation with, someone they say oh what kind of music you like and i say oh i like you know golden era hip hop and they're always like oh you like uh, tupac and biggie i say no that's later they oh you mean like old school like no that's before and it's like <laughs> it's always this confusing thing but i think because of when we grew up most people in their minds what they would consider golden era is that like biggie tupac era you know some of the guys you mentioned you know wu tang and all those from the early mid 90s to late 90s early 2000s right. so what we wanted to do here is we wanted to make a playlist each so stuff that i like from the original golden era and then stuff that scales listens to from what we would probably call the second golden era and we just wanted to listen through make some notes maybe pick out a line from each track that hit us uh in my case i picked out a couple big sections in some of them you know what can i do um but we wanted to evaluate what did we like at the end we're going to evaluate what did we like what didn't we like is there anything do we encounter any new artists that we would listen to more is there anything that we didn't like at all we don't want to follow up and then ultimately which playlist did we like better 
But before we get into the playlist, we asked some of our friends who are friends and family members who are around the same age, you know, some a little older, some a little younger, what kind of rap they like, why they like it, why it resonates with them, and who their favorite rappers are. So we asked some friends and family, why does rap resonate with them? What do they like about it? And who are their favorite rappers? So I'm going to read through mine. First up, we have Richie Esco. He says, I love hip hop because it was a music genre that was created within my lifetime that fuses elements from prior eras music, from rock to disco to jazz, and takes the best elements of that to make it its own thing. The raw storytelling and bravado is unmatched in any other music, and it's where people can express their true lyricism slash ability to bend words. Also, it was created here in New York City, so it's our music. It can embody all emotions from rage, anger, to love, sadness, humor. Favorite rapper is probably Tupac, because if you look up what a lyricist means in a dictionary, he embodies that more than anyone. And for me personally, he was a big hero and idol for me and spoke to troubled youth. Yes, he had his gangster rap songs, but he also had a lot of lessons in his music. Then I got Danielle says, it resonates with me because it reminds me of my hometown. I grew up listening to it, and as I got older, I realized that it takes skill to be able to put words together that rhyme and actually make sense and relate to subject matter the artists are dealing with. I enjoy the beats as well. And then, not today's garbage, though. <laughs> Favorite, if I had to pick, it would be the obvious, Biggie. He's so laid back and his delivery is so smooth. I appreciate his backstory and admire how he started from nothing and became arguably the best rapper of all time. Eminem is a close second, and Wu-Tang, of course, especially Ghostface Killer. Aladdin says, I enjoy older era rap because many 90s slash early 2000 era rappers had substance and their lyrics were thematic of urban youth at the time. The songs went beyond the cliche sex, money, and drugs. Favorite rapper is Eminem. He met him several times. Um, Olu, I enjoy rap because of his versatility and level of skill required to be proficient. I also enjoy the story that some rappers put forth in their lyrics, which engages the imagination. Favorite is difficult, but I would have to pick Michael Bolton. No. <laughs> no. Eminem. His lyrics span from manic to heartfelt, and his style is his style and wordplay is always impeccable. Taylor. I like rap because it's expressive and edgy. It's badass and takes me to a different world. Favorite rappers, Eminem, Biggie, and Lil Wayne. So on the uh, younger side of things, my fiance. Nice. Um, scales. You're up. Sure. Not Europe. You are up. <laughs> Europe. Hey, uh, All what, right. what continent can you see when you go to the bathroom? <laughs> European. Passionate nationality. Uh, almost. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> All right. Let's go to uh, first one of our loyal uh, TikTok followers. Um, his name is, oh, his screen name is Petty Endo 89. And this is what he had to say. He said that rap music resonates with me because it tells stories of real events that many people can relate to. I like rap for the ability to openly express yourself. My favorite rapper is Eminem because I consider him the GOAT and because we also share the same birthday. Uh, next up, we have our loyal compadre, JD. And JD said that rap music resonates with me because I see it as art that can be created, created and interpreted very differently by all parties. It's a powerful medium that can be used to inspire or speak a unique language to express the point of view. It's constantly evolving and impacts various aspects of culture throughout the world. My favorite rapper from the 90s was the Notorious B.I.G. I personally enjoyed the gritty details of his rhymes that made it feel like you were hearing him tell a story. I still love revisiting his albums and dissecting the content while vibing to the beats. Biggie's flow, persona, and impact to the rap world cannot be expressed enough as it is still felt to this day. Huge Biggie fan, JD. Uh, my brother Tony. Tony said, The story or life events that is being told, just being able to visualize this through the words and the badass beats or samples, it just gets me going. It feels good. There is a song for every mood that you wanted to fulfill. Favorite rapper. He said, wow, that is probably one of the toughest questions I've ever been asked. I like too many just to pick one. Again, they all fulfill a mood that I'm looking for. But Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, I mean, come on now, he's the GOAT. 
but you can't also forget Wu Tang Clan, Busta Rhymes, Jay Z, Nas, and the Locks, or even just Jada Kiss from the Locks. I'm East Coast Bias. Right now, though, I'm bumping JoJo Pellegrino. Check him out. He's from Staten Island and he's stamped by the Wu Tang Clan. There you go. There's a current artist I didn't even know about that's uh, apparently got the stamped approval of the Wu Tang Clan, JoJo Pellegrino. When you said Christopher Wall, I thought you were going to say Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Yep, <laughs> yes, another rapper <laughs> from this era. <laughs> oh, man. And now, um, great if I could next... do Christopher Walken impression. But I <laughs> well, when we read some of the lyrics we like, maybe we should read them like Christopher Walken. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, only, only Biggie's lyrics read them like Christopher Walken, not Christopher Wallace. <laughs> Christopher Wallace Walken. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, my buddy Joe Potts. He says that his favorite rapper of all time is Tupac. Uh, his rap was like telling a story. It illustrated deep stories and pain through the black community and the world. Some favorite song examples that I love the Tupac, Brenda Got a Baby, Keep Your Head Up, and Trapped. They all touch on experiences that we see in the world every day. I love rap music because it allows many artists to express their pain or joy through the art. And last but not least, uh, my good friend Jeff, who just also happens to be my boss, He's a huge rap fan. He's a old head, as you would call it. Uh, his favorite at rapper, he said, "Easy, the greatest of all time, Rakim." Hip hop was for the black youth by the black youth. It told the stories of our people, our music, and our struggle. It taught me things that I would never would have learned in school. It was a movement. Um, strong words. I know Jeff's a huge, huge rap fan. He's a huge fan of the era that you that you love their cast. Um, so I'm sure he'll be excited to listen to what we have to say coming up. Nice. That's all I got. Oh, actually, I you know I asked Rachel, my wife, um, briefly before we started this, and uh, she said that her favorite growing up uh, was Eminem. She also liked Lil Wayne in her twenties, you know, in her like the college years. Um, and her current favorite is uh, Doja Cat, who is a female rapper who's uh, pretty good. So that's her. Never heard of sense. Never heard of her. Yeah, okay. she's pretty new. So so far, we're hearing uh, some trends. It's Biggie, Eminem, a couple Tupacs. Yep. Uh, we're hearing a lot of that. Yep. Mr. Duff, with whom did you speak and what did they say? Uh, people. That's a really awkward answer for them to have given. Um, no, I, first up on the list here, uh, fella, you, you both know, Mr. Sarms. Future uh, podcast guest. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he said basically he can't pick just one, but if he had to choose, Big Pun, Biggie, or Black Thought of the Roots, um, the lyricist, man, the wordsmiths, who could rhyme so smooth and quick and create art in the process. Obviously, the beats make your head nod, but to me, these absolute killers on the mic made me fall in love with hip hop. Um, I have a fellow co worker, goes by the name of Scopes. Um, he likes hip hop for the same reason I like any type of music. It provokes a certain emotion, whether it's that time to party vibe or just straight up anger, like, you know, a DMX song. Um, his favorite rappers are LL Cool J or 50 Cent. It's tough for him to choose, but again, he feels like they encompass the fun party side and also the gangster side. Uh, both of their life stories are insane. Both of them were close with their grandmothers, and he kind of has a connection with that, um, you know, since he kind of resonates with, you know, only having kind of in a one parent home himself. Um, got another uh, fellow coworker by the name of Bax. Uh, he, what he likes specifically about hip hop in the nineties is that you can just hear the massive leaps in the genre that it took. Um, everyone had their own sound because everyone was trying something new. Um, his favorite rapper, it's tough for him to choose, but he has a guy named Big L. So he's a sucker for his punchlines and, uh, yeah, Big L is a good one there. It's kind of a little, uh, blast from the past there. Mm -hmm. Um, got another guy you guys know, Dave. Um, for him, it's all about the beat and the storytelling. Uh, he tends to gravitate towards something he can bob his head to, and that has quality rhymes, cadence, and flow on top. And then it's just like the full package for him. But for him, Nas is his favorite rapper of all time. And then uh, kind of going along with uh, you two here, I also asked my fiance, Chelsea, and she gave me a quick little snippet that she's just always had a special place in her heart for Usher and 50 Cent. So there we go. Nice. A couple nice. 50 cent shout outs yeah. there. Nice. Sure. Thank, thank God for Sarms that he said big pun. Somebody mentioned them. <laughs> big pun is awesome. Big pun is stellar. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes. 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 
All right. So how we're going to set this up is I have one perspective. So I like what I said before, the traditionally referred to golden era. What I listen, when I listen to rap, I like hearing crazy rhymes. I like hearing, you know, a lot of multi-syllable internal rhymes, basically guys trying to outdo each other who can come up with the most complex stuff and then, you know, cut, cut the legs out from everybody else. Um, that kind of changes in the early nineties and into mid nineties. And I, if I'm not talking out of school scales, would you say it became more about overall flow? Um, the product production values went up, like it's it, things got a little slicker sounding yeah. and was more about overall song versus like how many rhymes can you pile up in each yes. line? Yeah. I think you, you nailed it on the head. Um, yeah. you can, you can see, and we'll get into this, but the songs from your era is the blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. You can't get to my era without what your guys started. Yeah. Um, the rhyming, the rhyme schemes. Um, and then as you got into the nineties, that production level went up and yeah. the being able to sample and to produce the samples at a higher quality at a different level, um, just kind of raised the game, um, mm -hmm. and just added more to the rhyme scheme and, and, and the rapping. Um, right. so it was just kind of built upon what your guys started. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the technology also improved to be able right. to do that stuff too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the, the only throat clearing I'm going to do here is that we're not music historians. We're not musicologists. We're not saying that we're the final word on any of this stuff. We're just three guys with opinions. And we're going to go through, we're going to compare two eras, whatever we think about it. This is by no means definitive, but pretty much we're going to go through a song from my list, a song from Scale's list. We're going to discuss them. We're going to talk about what we like, what we didn't like. And I, at least I will give a key key line or, or a few lines from each song that I liked. Um, and at the end, all three of us are going to discuss and judge what list did we like better overall. Sound good? Yeah. yeah, it sounds good. I was going to just piggyback yeah. off what you're saying is, mm -hmm. um, and, and by no means, I could speak for my list. I, I assume your thoughts are the same, is that this is not a definitive list of you know 90s rap for me. This is a list of songs that I like, a list of songs that I feel like Castania would appreciate, because I was trying to win them over, um, and just songs that I feel like were definitive of the era. Um, there's a lot of tremendous artists and songs that, I couldn't fit because it's only 10 songs. So yeah. there's going to be people that are upset that a certain song or artist is left out. And I'm sorry, but I just, these are the, the criteria that I went by for this list. Um, and that's that. Yeah. It's not necessarily the greatest song by each artist. It's not the greatest songs of the era. It's just right. same thing. I, I meant to say that as well. I made a playlist that if someone said, oh, I hate rap. I'm like, all right, well, listen to these 10 songs. Let, let's see if you like this because these are 10 songs i really like from that era and i tried not to double up on artists except for because we're really doing 11 songs each with the honorable mention um i tried to have one by each of the artists that i like from that time um that's pretty much it i had one other thing to say and it just completely slipped yeah. my mind stuff is gonna do a like a short sound drop um as we intro each song on a playlist so if you're not familiar with the song or you know, to get you into the feel of what we're going to talk about, we're going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll and, get you in your heads. Yeah, and we're going to be unprofessional here and read because we took notes, especially yeah. listening to music that you never heard before. I still can't remember what all the songs sound like, even though I listened to them probably like five, six times each. Yeah, so Same. Yeah, I got, I got papers here. <laughs> I got the papers, get the papers. 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 Yeah, who get, I'm going to get the papers, get the papers. Right. <laughs> See, that... that Goodfellas reference got picked up, not the spider. You're right, spider. You know, yeah, said, well, I thought she said I'm okay, spider. <laughs> <laughs> you, drilled, you drilled the papers, the papers thing into my head. Yeah, so I, I will never forget. It's, that. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> okay, so to, we'll start off with. Uh, I guess we'll go we'll go one, one from mine and then one from scales. So yeah, let's start off with. I do, and the one other thing is, at least for myself, if you guys want to do it too, I'm going to be grading on the thumbs up and thumbs down system. So I'm going to grade anywhere from two thumbs up to one to side thumb to one down to two down. That's a lot of thumbs. It's a lot of thumbs. A lot of thumb action. Yes, it's a lot of thumb action. All right. Let's lead this off with the first track from my playlist, which is Boogie Down Productions. Nine millimeter goes bang. Let's hear a little bit.
Let's fast forward a little because the lyrics aren't there yet. All right. So there's a little bit of it. So very sparse production on this one. You know, most of it is just drums, um, you know, with some reverb, with some delay, and then you have bass line, you know, you have the elements that come in and out, but it's, the focus is on KRS-One's voice and his rap. Um, and it was accompanying himself with a la, 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 and there's delay, so it sounds like there's more than one on there. Um, but this song is one of the major ones that set the template for hardcore and for gangster rap because it's one of the first songs that's talking about, you know, a crime going down and, you know, murder happening. Um, and that's something that never resonated with me in that, you know, the next era. But with this, like, it's so absurd. And it's like, it tells a story and it tells it pretty vividly, you know, and the rhymes are good, but just the insanity of, you know, a guy talking about murder going la, 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 you know, and then the chorus is every time he's talking about killing someone, he, you know, has the gun up against their heads, wah, da, da, dang, wah, da, 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 dang, hey, you know, it's just crazy. And it's, it's a really cool track, um, strong Jamaican influence, uh, just in his phrasing and his lyrics. Um, what'd you think of it, Scales? Yeah, what year was this one from? Oh, 1987. I have that I have that in my phone note. I don't have it in my let's That's see. okay. Um March 3rd, 3387. 3387. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um yeah, so I had no idea. That, I mean, I know KRS-1, big fan of KRS-1. I knew his solo career, which was in the 90s. I did not know about Boogie Down Productions. So when I saw it, when you sent it at first, I was like, who the hell is Boogie Down Productions? And then I started playing it. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's KRS-1. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he lets you know. <laughs> yeah, he does. He always Just does. in case you're like, you're like, oh, this is a cool song. Who is this? This is KRS-1. <laughs> <laughs> Just an iconic voice uh, in, in rap yeah. history, KRS-1. Um, it's you know that music today but yeah <laughs> yeah um huge I, I wrote down um there was some synthesizer sounds which thought what i thought was kind of um apropos for the 80s right that was the the trademark yeah. sound of the 80s so that was kind of um you can tell where the time frame this song came from just from that alone uh overall i, I like the song not a huge fan of the la 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 got tiresome to me a little bit but i'm still giving the song uh one thumb up for me okay like the, Mm -hmm. what about you mr duff um duff? i mean yeah hello <laughs> <laughs> no I, yeah i like the uh kind of like the the little reggae kind of vibe to it um you know it has that just it it, it just it personifies that that era for for that kind of uh, music and um but yeah i i like the kind of like what's that personification or whatever like him adding in like sound effects with the way he's making the sounds i thought that was a really cool mm -hmm. um you know feature to that but yeah i give that one a thumb up okay that's my thumb. all right well, i give i give it two i like that track a lot um and one thing is so even though this album and this song helped to set the template for gangster rap so boogie down productions was krs1 and scott larock was a dj and Scott LaRock was actually murdered. He came to like mediate, um, you know, some kind of fight that was going on, and he got killed. Ugh. And that you know, it turned. He was young, like you know, talented guy. He had a, I think, he had a kid. Um, and it turned KRS One's world upside down, and he completely changed the message in his music to be anti-violence and anti all that crap. Um, so even though this put the genre in motion, he made a bit of a 180 after this. Yeah, that's horrible. Um, I read that. I didn't. Uh, I've heard of yeah. Scott LaRock, but I didn't know that he was killed. Um, that's pretty sad. Yeah, it's horrible. So I'll give uh, I'll give my few lines from here that I like. They have they fell and now. 
especially for the ones on your songs, I'm not gonna be able to do them in rhythm because I just don't really remember That's how okay. they go. Um, and I'm not here to do a rap thing. But they fell on, they fell onto the floor. But one was still alive. So I put my nine millimeter right between his eyes. Looked at his partner, and both of them were dead. So just before he joined his partner, this is what I said: "Wa da da dang, wa da 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 dang." Hey, listen to my nine millimeter go bang. Nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's as fun as a murder can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. First track up from your list is what? The first track from my list, and um, as our listeners will notice, uh, both of our lists are going to go in chronological order through the years. So you'll be able to keep in line with uh, you know how you grew up and listen to this stuff. Um, so the first track for me comes from November of 1992, um, and it is by the man known as Ice Cube, and it is the song called It Was a Good Day off of the Predator album. Uh, Duffy, can you hit us with a little Ice Cube? I would love to. Right. Long intro. Wait for it. Coming. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No barking from the dog, no small. And mama cooked the breakfast with no hog. Yeah, um, that's a little taste. So what I wrote down for this song, uh, first off, I, I wrote down where I could, uh, the samples that were used mainly in these songs, of uh, the ones that I thought were relevant. Uh, in this song, Ice Cube samples the Isley Brothers, which are you know a pretty famous R&B group uh, from the, I guess, 70s. Uh, Footsteps even, in the Dark was the name of the track that before. he sampled here. Even before, 60s. Yeah, they did Shout. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, 60s, you're right. 60s, 70s, yeah. Yeah, they okay. had a long career. That's, That's cool. cool. Um, so this track, I picked this track um, because I feel like Ice Cube exemplifies this early uh west coast rap this early the laid back vibe that was symbolic of the west coast rap west coast rap of this time frame the early 90s um just a feel good song you know it's not too fast paced uh the rhymes are pretty simple you can sing along easily with it um it's a fun story he's telling it's like you know, there's that meme about bad luck, Brian. Well, this is like good luck ice cube. Like everything is going good for him on this day. That's why it was a good day. Um, you know, he's getting lucky with the ladies. He's he's winning on CeeLo. Uh, the Lakers won the game. Like everything is just going good. And you can just picture all this stuff as he, he spits these rhymes. Like it just paints the picture for me. And then, like I said, the music from the Isley Brothers, that sample just kind of vibes with it. And it just feels good to me. Um, I wrote down one uh one lyric here uh that's pretty famous and i know my buddy joe potts will get a kick out of this because we used to say it at work all the time and it's when he says get me on the court and i'm trouble last week fucked around and got a triple double you yeah know, he's just <laughs> everything's going good he's even dropping a triple double in a pickup game of basketball what can get better than yeah. this day right now <laughs> um so what, that's what do you tell you what he didn't tell you was he was playing against a bunch of kids in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't need to know that part. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's my first track. Cast, what were your thoughts on this one? So <clears throat> I said that it's it's a huge step up in production value from the previous era. You know, the the bass sounds bigger and punchy. Um, you know, everything just sounds a little more crisp. I said cool sample, clear vocals. Um, this song is a fantasy. It's the opposite of ghetto life and what was portrayed in NWA. It's funny that you say he's he is like the kind of laid back sound, but like I only know him from NWA, you know, yes. which is like is another one that set the template for what was to come, you know, kind of like Boogie Down Productions, but like Boogie Down Productions sounds like golden era hip, you know, it sounds a lot like public enemy in some ways. Um just like overall sonics right. um but i said this is very laid back no shouting because i've heard him shouting on a bunch of stuff yes. um i thought the ending was hilarious it caught me by surprise the first time it was like uh it's like oh, what the fuck i'm thinking about um <laughs> but yeah I, I took it as this is it's not even something that happened that's just like a dream it's he's basically just saying the opposite of everything that he would normally see yep. you know on a day um yeah well i'll read my line after 
Duff, what do you think? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Duff. What did you oh, think about also, this one? That one gets two thumbs up for me. Yeah, same two for me. Thumbs. Yeah, kind of going again, you know, I'm kind of more of the impartial person here, so I didn't go into, like, the exact detail that you guys went with pulling up, you know, quotations and, and you know, lyrics and all that stuff with all of that and all the research. But, you know, a lot of these- That's why you're here. You don't you don't have a dog in the fight. You're here to just, you know, <laughs> exactly. whatever, whatever you but think about it. This is, uh, this is a song that, like, you know, I remember growing up with and, like, one of the early ones I remember hearing. And, you know, just, you know, I also kind of just, it has that vibe, like you guys were saying, it's like a laid back. It, it makes me think of, like, being in California and, like, just kind of just hanging out and just not doing anything all day, waking up late. Um, but it's just got that good vibe too. It makes me think of, you know, Friday, next Friday, those movies yes. and all those stuff. It's just, you know, I, I just connect certain things. When I hear songs, I connect them with movies. I connect them with other things. And this is definitely one of them where it kind of connects me with those kind of movies. And, um, yeah, it just, uh, it, it's got a good feel to it. And this one definitely gets two thumbs for me. Up. Oh. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So when you know nice. music's doing its job, when it can really put your mind somewhere that's not where you are not in your car or listen to it on the radio somewhere it's and like really definitely take you know somewhere you while you're driving too this yeah cool yeah nice See, all right my, my line from this one is actually everything that you played in the beginning it was just waking up in the morning gotta thank god i don't know but today seems kind of odd no barking from the dog dog no smog and mama cooked a breakfast with no hog so yeah, when he said the no smog part, I was like, oh yeah, this is a fantasy because there was always smog in LA. <laughs> <Yeah. at that. laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's right. a good track. I like that one. Thanks. All right. Next up on mine, we have EPMD Strictly Business from June seventh of eighty eight. We rap gardeners, no joke on the lyric, sorry to be modest. I knew I was the man with the master plan to make you wiggle and jiggle like gelatin. Just think while I sing, and to the bring structure. You don't sleep on the ear, you see something might rupture. It don't take time for me to blow your mind. It take so what I got here is it's a simple beat, um, uses... Eric Clapton's version of I Shot the Sheriff mainly, and then it's got some added, you know, bass drum on it, you know, just to give that boom bap. Um, very laid back flow from the both of them. A little bit mumble mouth. They're not as articulate as uh, some of the other guys from the era, but, you know, just it's all about the vibe on this one. Um, cool trade off between the two guys. Uh, there are a couple awkward rhymes and transitions to the chorus, which I feel like is a hallmark of a lot of rap. It's like they'll concentrate so much on getting all the rhymes in the verse. And it's like, oh, we got to get the chorus in somehow. And then some guys are much better at getting to the chorus organically than others. This one, there's a couple of, a couple of rougher spots. Um, but great overall, great rhymes, good overall vibe, and anti-drug. Um, there's that line about, uh, you know, do I sniff blow? Hell no. You know, you don't, you don't get that in a lot of, uh, a no, lot of later a stuff. It's a rarity. Yeah. Nice. Scales. What do you think? So as, as similar to not knowing care, us one was part of Boogie Down Productions. I knew Eric Sermon from the nineties because he was a solo artist and he was also involved with the uh, deaf squad who was red man and Keith Murray. And I knew him from that. Um, I've heard of EPMD, didn't have no idea that Eric Sermon was a part of EPMD. Um, so I was pretty excited to, to listen to this track and I, I loved he, it. He's um, the E, um, yeah. Yeah, he's the E and there's Parish, Parish Bacon Mike Doc. I saw he had a couple different <laughs> nicknames. Yeah. So there's all, the, uh, all those backronyms from that era. Yeah. Yeah. It's like where they have a name, you're like Big Daddy Kane, it's Kane. And then the backronym is like King Asiatic, nobody's equal. You know, but they actually <laughs> stand for that when he came up with Kane. <laughs> Um, I gave this one two thumbs up. I, I loved it a lot. Um, the I shot the sheriff sample is unique. Like I got me vibing, got me feeling it, got me singing yeah. the, the chorus. Um, the beat is good. Uh, you know, and I wrote down that they're, I don't know if they're both from, but I wrote down that they're from Long Island, New York. So, you know, yeah. shout out to Long Island. Um, you know, there's a lot of Bronx and Brooklyn flavor you'll see in our artists. So Long Island's a mm -hmm. little different spin on it. Yeah. Well, one of the other kings came from Long Island too. Castanya did. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, rock him. <laughs> um, Duff, what do you think of this track? Uh, this one didn't do it as much for me. Um, you know, I've heard it before. Okay. It's just, uh, you know, I do like the sample, the "I Shot the Sheriff" part of it, but it's uh, it's a little too like. 
you start getting, and, and this is kind of my thing with, with a lot of hip hop, you know, old or new, when it gets a little too repetitive and it doesn't switch it up enough and it doesn't have, you know, things that are kind of, it, it just doesn't, it gets kind of boring to me, if that makes sense. Um, and th this is kind of, that's just kind of falling into that category for me. Um, so I guess if we're going on our, you know, measuring scale, this is going to get, you know, thumb sideways. Side okay. thumb. Okay. Sideways thumb. That's fair. I, I I give two thumbs up to this one. I give two thumbs up to most of the ones on my list, you know, just because it's obviously if I'm making a playlist that someone else is going to enjoy, you know, I'm going to better love them. give you the tracks I really like. Yeah, but um, I could get. I understand just because their rap style is could be a little monotone. Like I said, they're a little bit mumble mouth, but it's about the vibe of it. You know, it's like if you if you in, if you enjoy it, you're gonna get hooked right away. And if not, you're like, okay, this is like I'm hearing the same thing over. I get it. Um, I always thought it was interesting that they used the Eric Clapton version of "I Shot the Sheriff" because a lot of rap, especially in that era, tends to be you know, like Afrocentric and you know promoting you know black causes, whatever. But they didn't use Bob Marley, and I think it's always cool that the rappers back then and their DJs and the producers they just respected good music no matter who did it. You know, because like. Um, average white band is another, you know, they were a funk band that um, pick up the pieces, I think is their track, what gets sampled a lot. If you heard it, you know it right away. Um, so it's just cool that it, it's a kind of music where ultimately, no matter what, no matter what's being said, it's all about the quality of the music that's underneath, no matter who did it, no matter where it came from. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, my line from this one is a pretty long one because it went on a bit of a tear. While well, I'm the mellow, the fellow, the who who likes to say hello to a fly girl that's good to go with the slow tempo and the offbeat rhyme flow. Cause when I'm in action, there's no time for maxing or relaxing, just reacting and subtracting on a sub guy MC whose mouth keeps on yapping and flapping. I lose my cool. Then I'll start slapping and smacking. You want to roll? Then I'll be start jacking and capping. No time to lounge. I'm packing and strapping. Love that one. Oh, that's really good. It's high quality. Right yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of lines, and you know, it's it's always just teetering on that edge of it's like ah, it's gonna fall off, and then you'll know, bring it back to you know, the rhyme comes on point. Yeah. All right, so let's get to my second track. Uh, I selected Dr. Dre, featuring Snoop Dogg, "Nothing But a G Thang." Uh, this is off the the landmark album, uh, arguably one of the greatest rap albums of all time, "The Chronic." Uh, which dropped December of 92. Uh, Mr. Duffy, if you'd be so kind to play us a sample from this track. Yes, sir. One, two, three, and to the four. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the door. Ready to make an entrance, so back on up. Because you know we're about to rip shit up. Give me Nice. A little flavor for you. Um, I, I love Dr. Dre. Um, he's one of the one of the rap artists I didn't mention earlier. Um, growing up, you know, middle school, high school age, I listened to a lot of Dr. Dre stuff and Snoop Dogg, of course, both of them uh, personified that West Coast flavor, that laid back um, rap scheme. Uh, the the G Funk, which um, Dr. Dre obviously didn't create it, but he really put it on the map. Um, and the G funk was really a, uh, sampling a lot of the P funk, which is, uh, Castanya may know a lot more musically about that than I do, but George Clinton and the parliament, um, a lot of their music, he, he used that and he sampled it for his songs, songs that he produced. We all know Dr. Dre is one of the greatest rap producers of all time. So he produced a ton of other albums that weren't his own. Um, and he used this, uh, the G funk, um, and, you know, the the sound that was personified in the song is the sound of the early 90s urban LA, um, you know, not as rough as the NWA sound was, more in line with that Ice Cube track that we just listened to. Um, but this one had Dr. Dre stamp on it. Um, and that meant, meant a lot more to the, to the rap industry than, than Ice Cube's, you know, Dr. Dre was a huge name in the rap game. Um, yeah. So that's why I picked this song. Uh, one lyric that I wrote down here is uh, from Dr. Dre, and he says, Now it's time for me to make my impression felt, so sit back, relax, and strap on your seatbelt. 
because you've never been on a ride like this before with a producer who can rap and control the maestro. Just, uh, just makes like when he says to sit back, relax, and strap on your seatbelt, it just makes you want to be excited to listen to the song. Like, what, what, what's he going to yeah. say next? What's coming after this? Um, yeah. One of my favorite rap songs of all time. How did you feel about it, Cast? Uh, two thumbs up. Um, I mentioned Dre's production. So I never really got into Dr. Dre. I didn't really know much about him. You know, I know he's from NWA, um, but never really got into a lot of his music. Um, you know, I knew a couple tracks that he did with Eminem, you know, around 2000, 2001's the album, right? Yep. Um, but listening to this stuff, I gained an appreciation for him. So I mentioned his production. Um, the hooks are in the music. And, you know, like, it's not just in the vocals. And, you know, like, the what he's got going on musically is not just background noise and sound. You know, like, there's an actual hook there. So that sticks in your ear. Um, Snoop is smooth as hell. And they sound like an evolution of what I like. Inventive rhymes, great flow, artistry. Um, you know, like, uh, Snoop... Snoop you know, is a very unique persona and yeah. nobody sounds like him vocally or rap wise. You know, he just kind of weaves his way in and out of the track. He's got amazing swagger. Uh, yeah. So I like this one a lot. And uh, the funk in P funk is that George Clinton had two bands, parliament and funkadelic. And to tell the difference between them, like, you know, they both released so many albums and eventually it's just, it's just like P funk it's parliament and funkadelic. So it's just like music by the collective. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Duff, how did you feel about this one? Uh, this is a this is a classic for me. Um, I love this one. Uh, grew up with this one. Kind of just you know getting into this back in the day. But um, yeah, kind of like what you guys are you know piggybacking off of that. Just like the way that they flow. Um, you know, it's just kind of it, they're like wordsmiths here, kind of. And and you know, Snoop Dogg. He's got such a unique sound. Hard to believe that you know listening to him here. He has such an influence with Martha Stewart nowadays, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just like isn't he on like some games? He does like some cooking thing with her. I don't. Know. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's yeah he's became a lot bigger than the rap game itself. Yeah, Snoop Dogg, yeah he one of those did. Things. He went from being on trial for murder to staying relevant <laughs> in like pop culture for yeah. so long. Yep. Not too bad, but this one yeah. definitely gets two big thumbs up for me. Um, yeah, just, yeah, this is just it. You know this this time period. This is an absolute must for this time period yeah, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. all right was well, that two thumbs all the way across the board yeah. that was good my line from this one's kind of short it's just falling back on that ass with the hellified gangsta lean getting funky on the mic like an old <laughs> old batch of collard greens that, like, that, <laughs> cracked, <laughs> that cracked me up yeah it's a good one <laughs> yeah we might we might we might have to have a whole episode where we just like you know read rap lyrics the entire time and just you yeah. know get some get some vibes yeah. off of that that might be quite comical yeah like maybe that. maybe i'll read them like i did in that early video where i was reading the technodrome <laughs> yes rap yes in a uh fake british accent <laughs> when they masterpiece theater <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. the, the lyrics don't hit the same that way <laughs> all right let's move on to track three from my list we've got eric b and rakim follow the leader there Title track from their second album from July 25th, 1988. Let's hear a little bit of that. Self-esteem making super superb and supreme before a microphone still I been. This was a taste. I wasn't supposed to blink. I was supposed to wait, but let's motivate. Yeah. First time I heard this track, completely blew my mind. I so like I said, I got into rap, you know, kind of finding my way around this era and I remember I got this album and paid in full. I ordered them from Amazon and you know, I came, I put them, you know, put them up on the computer and I was listening and this came on and from the first time I heard that bass line, the dun 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 dun, I was like, that was really cool. Everything, I could write a dissertation on this track, so I'm going to try to stick to my notes, but I have here. Completely blown away first time I heard it. Listened on repeat for days. Still do 10 years later. Bassline is sick. 
ethereal sounding strings uh electric piano sample from nautilus by uh what the hell is his name bob james so it's one of the most sampled tracks of all time and it's it's so cool what because I, I don't at this point i don't really know what the line between dj and producer but whoever put the music down whether it was eric b whoever did the music for this track it just took like three notes from an electric piano solo on this song that uh bob james this you know kind of smooth jazz jazz fusion artist thought was like a throwaway on one of his albums and just that da -na -na, is not a big theme in it it's just three notes he played in a solo and they just hone in on that and it becomes a theme in this it's crazy i thought it was so cool um I said, electric piano sample from Nautilus is unsettling, but Rakim's confidence is settling. His voice locks into the drums of any more better than any song I've ever listened to. The music and vocal elements lock in and blend. Um, the lyrics match the otherworldly sounds. Rakim's rhymes are much more complex than anything that came before. So a lot of what came before was just that word at the end of the sentence that rhymed, and it was old school. And then this was just... Um, a lot of internal rhymes um lines don't all stop and start on the beat they all just kind of break through the bar lines and rakim played saxophone and was influenced by john coltrane and coltrane played all these long crazy uh phrases um and his voice was very smooth you know it's like that velvety sound it's he's not shouting it's like he's going to do it quietly and it makes it commands your attention it's like you really focus on what he's saying um and i just like you know the whole track is awesome just from as soon as you hear that rock kim will say it's like all right now same like you were saying about strapping on your seatbelt. that's like all right we're in for a ride let's hear what, what we got yeah i'm um, with you so two two huge thumbs up for me for this one one of my yeah. favorite songs of any genre of all time yeah <clears throat> what do you think skills i gave it two thumbs up as well um i didn't i've i mean i've heard this song before we've done the show um not many times but now i'm like growing a love for it this song is phenomenal i'm gonna like play it a lot more frequently and when i'm searching songs on youtube and stuff um mm -hmm. his his rhyming is just i mean this guy you can tell he laid the groundwork for a lot of the rappers that would come in my favorite era like this guy was ahead of his time he he was like you said he took what they were, the rappers before him were doing and just took it to the next level um right. you know, a lot more complex rhyme schemes I wrote down that uh you know i loved i'd like to beat a lot i like the scratching i like when rap songs have the the record scratching to it that just mm -hmm. gets me every time i love that for some reason um yeah i wrote down uh let's see i wrote down one lyric i wrote down i'm everlasting i can go on for days and days with rhymes displays that engrave deep as x-rays that's just yeah, that's awesome that's so money <laughs> it's so good yeah i love it it's i love so it cool. two thumbs yeah. up again for this one awesome mr durf uh, Mr. Duff. <laughs> hey, that's me. Rock him. Yes. Uh, I am a big fan. Uh, two thumbs up. Um, it kind of uh, falls into the line of like some of my favorite hip hop. Um, similar sounds with like Jurassic 5 and The Roots, where it's got more of that funk sound to it. Um, you know, the way that they can just like, you know, continuously flow through the, the rhymes and, and it's almost like they're not even taking a breath and they just kind of get from point A to point B. And you're like, how the hell did they get there? Um, and yeah, he's just got a good sound and I love Jurassic five. I love the roots and, and it's just, you know, he, it, it's just, you know, I know that they even took samples off of his stuff back in the day too. Um, yeah, two, two big thumbs up for this one as well. It's funny you say that it sounds like he's not even taking a breath because his stuff, it's like, if you're, you know, singing along in the car or whatever, and you don't breathe in the right spot, you hit the end of the line and you go to say something, you're like, <clears throat> <laughs> like you realize like <laughs> it's like you're swimming and you didn't breathe in <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm gonna do kind of a long line from this one for mine so i guess i'll start from brothers try and others die to get the formula but i'm gonna let you sweat you still ain't warm you're a step away from frozen stiff as if you're posing dig into the dig into my brain as the rhyme gets chosen 
So follow me, and were you thinking you were first? Let's travel at magnificent speeds around the universe. What could you say as the Earth gets further and further away, planets are small as balls of clay? <laughs> I stray into the Milky Way, worlds out of sight, far as the eye can see, not even a satellite. Now stop and turn around and look. As you stare in the darkness, your mind gets took. And then the awesome alliteration. Uh, so keep staring. Soon you suddenly see a star. You better follow it because it's the R. That's what I like about some of this another thing the lyrics in these this old era some of the alliterations are awesome you know like we start in each word or at least you know a phrase all with the same letter yep. that's something that you don't really hear that much now i don't really think so yeah it's high quality it's really really yeah. good I'll, I'll try i'll try to leave it alone so i don't keep <laughs> talking about this one but yeah love, love that track so good i'm also noticing a, a theme so far I, I noticed that a lot of the a lot of the the songs in your playlist and this is probably um symbolic of that era is there's a dj and there's an mc right and all is that true yeah or no? they um well with eric b and rakim obviously eric b's name is in the group because i think rakim wanted to show like that's you know equal importance um a lot of them will at least give shouts to their dj like big daddy kane will uh, shout out mr c who's his dj a lot um but yeah you hear the scratching on it yeah you know, a lot good. of tracks it's good stuff it's pretty cool Mm -hmm. all right uh number three for me um so i kept with the west coast flavor uh because i felt like this early 90s before we hit 94 was really dominated by the west coast um and there's one more guy that i haven't mentioned in the west coast and that's tupac um and for this playlist i just happened to pick tupac featuring uh featuring digital underground uh i get around and i picked that one because I know Castania loves uh, Digital Underground, so I felt like he, and I, I didn't know if he'd heard the song or not, so I wanted him to hear it, um, and I felt like he would uh, enjoy it. Um, Duff, can you play us a little Tupac featuring Digital Underground? A little snippet. <laughs> Tupac's voice, man, it just um his rhyming is on point and it's just his his voice just hits me um different than a lot of other rappers for some reason. It's just something about it. It's just got like a like you said bravado before, it's got like a bravado, but it's got something else to it that just um hits me different. And character. I love it. The character, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just like his voice has character. It's 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 unique. Yeah. Um Digital Underground, obviously a uh, a big influence on Tupac, right? I mean, that's how he. They he was part talk. of them for right. for a little bit, I think. Right. Yeah. So as seen he... in as seen in one of Duff's favorite movies, Nothing But Trouble. Why you're getting ahead? Of <laughs> I was going to talk about this when we got to your song. <laughs> I'm sorry. So wait, let me bring uh, it back. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Uh, so I, I picked this song because I I felt it was good and it touched on both eras a little bit, kind of a bridge. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of other Tupac stuff that came after this uh, that was solo, and that stuff is awesome and tremendous as well, and um, probably more well known by the, you know more well loved by the Tupac fans. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a song I picked, um, and I'm giving it two thumbs up. Um, and just another quick note um, about this album in general that dropped February of '93. Um, there's a quote from the source, which is a uh, big hip hop magazine at the time in the nineties. Um, and what they had to say was that, uh, the combination of sixties, black political thought and the nineties urban reality, um, is what made Tupac what he is. And he's not afraid to speak his mind about it. And that was, um, you know, Tupac didn't hold back on, he got, he, he rapped about anything. Um, and I think that's why so many people, uh, still love him to this day. So mm -hmm. that's my pick. All right. Cass, what did you think? About I, it? So I said about this one, and I'm glad that you included one that had Shock G on it because his verse is good, and he's like Shock G's just natural voice was awesome. Like he you know, just had a smooth flow to him, and then you know as Humpty, he's you know, <laughs> funny too. Um, <laughs> shame that he died. He's really talented, but I guess you know, he had some issues at the end. But um, all about Tupac. This track, so it's good flow, good rhymes, swagger. Um, sounds effortless when it comes from him that's part of his whole you know his charisma um 
very identifiable voice. And this is the first time that we're hearing a voice doubled up, doubled and tripled. So nothing on my list. Uh, you'll, you won't really hear the voices doubled up. Doubling mean that like you record a line and you go back and record the line again. So if you listen, you know, I could even like, you know, teach you how to, like you hear there's a little bit of like a little bit of rub, um, you know, some phasing because he's doing the lines over and over. And then there's ad libs on top too. Um, that's something I actually learned interning at a music studio, like a rap music studio, senior year of uh, college. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like the first time that we're hearing the voices doubled up on here. Um, I said, love shock G <clears throat> the projection is kind of transitional. It's not that full bass heavy sound yet, but it's a little fuller sounding than what we've heard previously in previous eras on mine. Now, obviously the ice cube track was very full sounding, but, uh, yeah, I just, I like how part of Tupac's person, you know, one side of Tupac's personality really comes through on this one. You know, he's, <laughs> I was laughing, listen to it. And part no. of the sample for this one, oh, um, a group called Zap, I think it's from the 80s, 1986, their song Computer Love was sampled here. And I, I found out that Zap was sampled by a lot of rappers in the 90s. I didn't know much about Zap, but now I do. There, there tend to be a lot of repeat offenders in the, the samples. The same artists tend to get sampled a lot. Yeah, the, I mean, the most sampled thing ever is Funky Drummer by James Brown. Uh, there's a lead, there's a drum break in there that like all the guys from the 80s and early 90s James sampled. Brown was yeah, uh, a huge influence. Yeah. Duffy, what Duff, did you think? What, is there an echo in here? Are we doubling the We're sound? doubling up. Yeah. Doubling up here? <laughs> hey, uh, I learned something, huh? Nice. Um, yeah, Tupac, again, I know I kind of briefly mentioned this before. He's uh, not one of my favorites. But I will say, again, kind of going along again here, one of the most distinct, like, voices out there. Um, you know, I go with him, Snoop Dogg, uh, one of my personal favorites, Easy e Like, you know... It, you just hear them, you're like, you just, you know, you, you know who they are, I would hope. Um, even a person that doesn't really listen to this uh, genre of music would most likely know. But yeah, Tupac, it, it does, he's always been very effortless with, you know, the way he uh, he rhymes and just come, everything kind of comes together. It almost sounds like, you know, he's, he's doing it, it's like almost lounging in a couch or something or in like a lazy boy while he's doing it. It's just the vibe that I'm getting. It's like that West Coast you know, laid back vibe that you just really pick up on his style. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely a big digital underground fan, um, which, you know, I'll get into a little bit later about a certain movie that I think was brought up. But <laughs> um, if I'm going to give this one, I'm going to go probably just one thumb up for this one. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I said, but I gave it, I'm giving it two thumbs. I, yeah, I like this one. Um, I, I've barely listened to Tupac, honestly, but whenever I hear something, I generally like it um he's kind of an intriguing figure I, yeah. I would listen to more of him so i don't i like the ice cube track so far but i don't think i'd listen to more ice cube i yeah. would definitely listen to more dre snoop and tupac though nice. um okay. and my line from this track once again duff just happened to play <laughs> it's uh she told me that she needs me cries when she leaves me and every time she sees me she squeezes me lady take it easy hate to sound sleazy but tease me i don't want it if it's that easy uh, I wrote the same line down the lady, too. The lady, <laughs> easy. Yeah. Every time I listen to the song, I laughed at that part. So it's just the way that he said it. It's like you could see him saying it. You know, like you could see him like the hands. Like, lady, take it easy. easy. <laughs> Don't forget Chuck yeah. G. He's the one that put the satin on her panties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shock. He was so good. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up, we have... Ultra Magnetic MCs, Cool Keith housing things from, sorry, October 4th, 1988. I wasn't on the right part of my phone. Uh, let's hear a little, little clip of that. Born, back this way, follow me now, head this way and do this, while I rap on through this, for many germs who never knew the switches, upside down, turn around, look in the mirror, we rap so cool keith pretty unique voice i would say nobody sounds tonally like he does um a little easy -esque, a little yeah. bit in my opinion. yeah i don't really know easy -E, so that's i haven't really yeah, listened it's a good call duff um that's why multi-syllable rhymes i like this one Ooh. Oh boy! My microphone got excited. Got the, but I like got the uh, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> your microphone got excited, but your pop screen got flaccid. It just <laughs> more like a plop screen. Um, 
I said multi-syllable rhymes, funky beat. Um, this sample is used on a, another Big Daddy Kane track called Wrath of Kane. That one is pretty crazy. Um, a lot of screen, stream of consciousness stuff from Cool Keith. Um, some awkward lines. Um, honestly, if I wanted to pick something from Ultra Magnetic MCs, and when I made my playlist, I just thought of this one quickly, and it wasn't really the one I was thinking of. So if I were to make the playlist over i probably would have picked a different track by them this isn't my favorite of theirs but it's still like cool keats personality comes through um and he was all about i was watching an interview with him like he would try to like end all the lines in the same word like he was one of the first guys to do that or go a whole bunch of lines without rhyming he would just try to do things that other people weren't doing um and he's like a mysterious character like there's uh the rumor that he <laughs> recorded the album like coming out of bellevue that he was you know like in the mental ward but it's, it's all just like nonsense <laughs> he's just he's just like an eccentric creative guy and you know he's got some amazing stuff and then some stuff you know that falls short but uh pretty cool uh scales what'd you think of this one so i give this one uh one thumb up um i enjoyed it the the music was a little frenetic it was a little crazy maybe that's why i didn't give it the full two thumb um yeah, i think part of that is the mix i think the guitar part is mixed a little bit loud and then i think the bass drum the is a little too loud too it could have things could have sat in the mix a little bit better it's okay just like yeah but yeah that makes sense um i also so, i didn't say but i give one thumb so one thumb okay yeah um I wrote down, uh, so the producer of this track said G. I don't know if he was producer of all their records or not, but uh, he's he introduced... Of, uh, he's, he's part of Ultra, Ultra Magnetic MC. Okay, he raps on so it says that, too. they said that he introduced um, a lot of new sampling techniques at the time. So he was pretty groundbreaking as a, a record producer, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, okay. And then I wrote that uh, KRS-One had almost joined this group early on in his career. Did you know that? I did not. They are all from the Bronx. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So a little fact toy cool. for you. Nice. Yeah. That would have been Yeah. Overall, pretty good. I gave it a one thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Duff. Well, I think you already kind of figured that I was going to like this one. Uh, he's just his style, the way he he rhymes, the way he, like just his like little breaks and his pauses and like how he carries you know his his volume or whatever it just reminds me so much of Easy E right here. And, you know, I loved Easy e I just liked his style, just so unique. Um, and, you know, it just got a little like, you know, it, I don't know, it just, it, he's got a good sound to it. I'm going one and, can we do like one and a half? I don't know, like one and one side? Or, sure, go for it. Making it up, we're one and whatever. And You give, uh, it, you give it a hang 10. <laughs> yes. That's where I'm going with nice. that. Yeah, I, I think that... I'll send. I'll listen to that album a little more, and I'll send you guys a track that I would probably give two thumbs instead of just one thumb on this one. But you know, he's always an interesting listen. Um, my line from this one is one of the opening ones. Well, I'm sonically high, bionically for you dummies. Ironically stupid. What are you, Cupid? Steal my rhymes and then you loop it. You know, makes me laugh. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. Senor Scales. Right. Sure. Uh, number four. So number four for me, uh, on the timeline, we are turning the page to 1994, and it's now time for the East Coast renaissance of rap music. Um, Wu-Tang Clan. Going to the Wu-Tang Clan, uh, cash rules everything around me. Cream. Get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Duffy, can you play us a little taste of that? You might honor. Cash rules everything around me, cream it. Yeah. Check this old fly shit out. Hold up. Cash rules everything around joint. me, cream it. Get the here money, we, we dollar dollar bill, y'all. Yeah. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no job. Had second hands. Moms bounced on old men. So then we moved to Shallon Land. I could keep playing that one all day. Nah, yeah, yeah. I know you love that song. Um yeah uh so that track so wu-tang clan for all that that don't know is a collection of uh a ton of rappers uh rizza jizza method man uh inspector deck odb ghostface killer uh you god master killer and then uh capadonna um maybe some you others forgot, mixed in there that were in there you for forgot a minute the, you forgot the guy who took the lead right there raekwon raekwon i said raekwon might have bleeped out on the 
Um, oh. Yeah, so Raekwon. Maybe I'm just not paying attention. I'm no, sorry. it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, God. so you know, Raekwon and Inspector Dick are, are rapping on that song, and, and Method Man's kind of doing a little chorus. Um, but this song is a juxtaposition of what we just listened to in my first three tracks, which is that West Coast, um, the G-Funk, that easy vibe. We're getting back to the East Coast now, and you can the sound is different. It's gritty. Um, it's tough. It's a it's a little faster paced. Um, it, it really it started a a waterfall of great music that's about to come out of New York again. Obviously, we know Castania's era is a ton of great music out of New York, but the West Coast took over there for a little bit in this um, hardcore rap genre. And now the New York now the New York scene is about to come back. Um, Enter the Woo. Um, 36 Chambers, three times platinum album, just a, a classic rap album among all uh, huge rap fans. I know Duff is a fan and Sarms is a big fan of the Wu-Tang. Um, so I give the song two thumbs up. Castanio, what did you think of the Wu-Tang? And it was this, I don't, I don't know what your exposure was to Wu-Tang before this. Minimal. I have, you know, I've always heard of him, but never really listened to him. I, I like Method Man. Um, I like his voice, you know, like anything. I, I liked, uh, I always like that track Judgment Day from uh, that's good, that's his solo good album back in the day. Yep. Um, said good method man hook, very distinctive, uh, ethereal, hazy beat, kind of floating sound in contrast to the lyrics, which are you know grounded and you know violent. Um, picked up on some five percent nation reference, I think, uh, the old earth reference uh, you know when i say old earth i think that's a five percent nation that's huge in hip-hop i know rakim big daddy kane a lot of guys and a lot of guys in Wu-Tang are uh, five percenters um first verse glorifies drug dealing second verse is kind of about the consequences of what can happen if you know in a life of crime um and i like the second verse better i like inspector dex version uh verse better i wasn't didn't love raekwon's um okay. this one gets one thumb up from me um i liked it but i didn't love it okay all right fair enough duffy how many thumbs you got for the woo uh if i had more than two i'd give it to it <laughs> uh yeah i just you know earliest memories of this one is like i remember going over to my cousin's house when i was a kid and he was like playing some of this for me and probably wasn't allowed to hear it yet but i didn't care because it was just like Ooh, what's this and it's got you know this like little piano sound to it and it's like you know you got these guys i haven't heard of before and it's like some of these sounds that they're putting together and i'm like okay i can get into this stuff and yeah it was just uh and and even to today i still have i have a lot of wu-tang on some of my playlists and stuff that just pop up and you know, i listen to them all the time still to this day and I, they're just yeah they were influential um their sound you know just kind of resonates and uh you know it kept me uh you know ever so intrigued to kind of keep listening Nice. Yeah. I like the idea of having a lot of different rappers that can weave in and out of a track. So I just, I haven't yeah. listened to enough of those. I would listen to more. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And then they all obviously released tremendous uh, solo albums too. So it was just, mm -hmm. just a great group of, uh, great group of rappers. And, and the sample on this track, for those that want to look up, I know JD likes to look up the samples. Um, they sampled the Charmels as long as I've got you. That's the piano and the drum sample on this song. So sounds like cool. a group from the 50s or the 60s, I'm imagining. <laughs> it sounds that way. Yeah. All right. That's, Go ahead, Cass. My, my line was, the court played me short. Now I face incarceration. Pacing going upstate my destination. I had uh, I had the opening. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no jive. Mm. So you know it's the woo when you hear that line. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back to New York. That's right. It's... All right. Next up, we got Slick Rick, children's story from November 1st, 1988. Let's hear a little bit. This is how we do it. Y'all tucked in? Yeah. Here we go. Once upon a time, not long ago, when people wore pajamas and lived life slow, we laws were stern and justice stood, and people were behaving like they ought to good. They lived a little boy who was misled. By so, totally different voice from everybody else we heard. You know, he's got like a very light, 
sounding voice. He's not yelling. He's quiet. He doesn't. He doesn't sound like a tough guy. He's got a half British accent because I think he was born in England and you know came over here. So it's like not fully one or the other. Um, I wrote great storytelling, vivid. He does characters and voices in a lot of his songs, which uh, I think are a nice touch that you don't really get too much. Um, it's just about kids getting corrupted by violence and there's a sense of humor to a lot of his stuff um i never really cared all that much about the storytelling aspect of rap but when i started listening to slick rick it's like okay i can appreciate it now because i see he paints a picture and you know it's cool it's not what i always want to hear but i enjoyed it um two thumbs up from me scales two thumbs nice. as well um yeah. i always and like it's funny this, this... it's it's funny i think you mentioned montel jordan before um duffy right? did yeah yeah, and and here we go. This yeah. is where I think it's where he got that from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I this was one of the the songs from this era that I that I did love um, when I was listening, still listening to my stuff. I've always liked this song. Um, I like the storytelling nature of it. Um, he paints the picture and 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 rhymes and wraps it so easily. You can see what's going on as he tells this children's story, a bedtime story. Um, yeah, he's just so eccentric, um, and I feel like. I think Eminem um, says that uh, Slick Rick was a, a huge influence uh, on his rapping style, and can you can see that? I mean, you can see they're both kind of a little crazy, a little eccentric. They tell stories; yeah. they can be funny, but still be serious. Um, so I love Eminem. Therefore, I love who he came from, which is a part of him is Slick Rick. So two thumbs mm -hmm. up. Nice, Duff. Also, two thumbs up, as uh, you know, mentioned with that little Montel Jordan little thing that I did there. But uh, it's obvious that he pulled that from there. Um, but yeah, it kind of scales like what you were saying, too. It's like I didn't I, I looked at it after the fact, but I'm like I was listening to it kind of like the voices and the storytelling that he's doing. And like I'm like, oh, it's you know, it's kind of funny, like uh, Eminem likes doing that. He likes I mean, sometimes Eminem. In my opinion, he went a little overboard for a little bit and it was a little too cartoony and childish to certain extents with how he did stuff, but then he came back down to earth again. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of same thing where he would do like voices and like, you know, the way he could tell the story and, and paint the picture with that. Um, I, I picked up a lot of that on here and I, that's why I was a big fan. So yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. He's one guy from that era who's not really about the athletics. He's you know, it's, it's more the more, a little more laid back, more storytelling, you know, and then, you know, put some good rhymes together too here and there. Um, not here and there, you know, but every now and then it's like, oh, that, that was awesome. Um, I have, they did the job, money came with ease, but one couldn't stop. It's like he had a disease. He robbed another and another and a sister and a brother, tried to rob a man who was a DT on the cover. It's good. It's yeah. good. Good stuff. Um, I didn't write. I didn't write any lyrics for this one, but when I hear when I think of the song, the first thing that always pops into my head is Dave the Dope Fiend. Was that from <laughs> when he's in the, in the song? When he's like, when oh, he goes oh, up oh, into like oh, a, oh, yeah. I forget. He's like rolling into yeah, a warehouse or bullets. like abandoned building or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's looking for bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two thumbs up. Yes. All right. So two thumbs all around on that one. Yes. There is just way too much to talk about on this topic. We couldn't have fit it all in one episode. So next week, stay tuned because we'll be bringing you part two. See you then.